So I understand uh, a lot of the Muslims here, they're here to troll, but I'm just actually here for like sincere questions. Good. I just have this one sincere question. I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart. Good, man. So Go I, I, yeah, so I understand like a lot of the, um, mo the vast majority of New Testament scholars right now in our day and age, yeah. they don't class like the I am statements you find in the book of John as like historically like accurate, right? Why? I was reading Richard Bauckham's book, Jesus and the Eyewitnesses and stuff. Sure. And he came to the conclusion that like the I am st statements you find in the gospel of John, yeah. they're, they're just advanced theological developments. And in order to find the historical Jesus, mm -hmm. you have to refer to the, you have to refer back to like the Psalm of the gospels. Yeah. Do you know any way to like rebuttal that? Because this is my main issue I have. Yeah. It's just, I've already rebutted yeah, it. Ahead. Let me repeat what you're saying so people can understand. He is representing the current state of Christian scholarship. I want you to hear what this young man said. He's not making it up. So you don't condemn him. You don't blame him. He's telling you what you're going to learn in college and seminary by even those who confess to be conservatives. That in John, much of what you have in John are not the words of the historical Jesus. It's more of an interpretation. It's more of John theologizing, telling you what Jesus meant, but not giving you the actual words of Jesus. You guys aware of that? That's what they teach. My challenge to these scholars would be for the first 1800 years of the church can you find any conservative christian believing christian not yeah. someone who's an atheist agnostics not someone who denies the historicity of the bible but someone who affirms its historicity and that the authors of the books whose names are attached to these books which we find in tradition ascribing these books to these authors believe that these were the authors for example there is no competing tradition anywhere in church history that someone other than Matthew wrote the gospel attributed to him. Someone other than Mark wrote the gospel attributed to him. Someone other than Luke wrote the gospel of Luke and Acts, and so on and so forth. That is a modern criticism. But if you go back as far as you trace the manuscript evidence, even as far back as Irenaeus, the disciple of Polygarp, Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke, John wrote John, no competing voices in the church where they argued about the authorship of these books. Now let's put that aside. You won't find any one of them questioning the historicity of John. Their belief was that John focused on those aspects of Jesus's teaching that Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not mention, and it only makes sense. Why then repeat the very material found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You already have that material in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. If that's all John wanted to do, then he didn't need to write anything because Matthew, Mark, and Luke already say basically the same thing. John comes along and gives us those details not mentioned in the other Gospels, details of the historical Jesus in order to give us a more complete picture. That was the view of the church. Now, besides that, what evidence do I have that the I am sayings of Jesus are genuine and the authors knew about these I am sayings, but even though they knew about them, they didn't feel the need to mention all of them, but that they're aware of it. Yes. Mark 6, 45 to 52, Matthew 14, 22 to 33, and John 6, 16 to 21, all repeat the same miracle story of Jesus walking on water. And then when the disciples saw him walking at water at night, they thought they saw a ghost. And in Greek, he says, Ego eimi, I am, do not be afraid. So right there, you have a miracle story of Jesus in which he unveils his identity as the divine I am, as the Lord of the winds and the seas and the waves, who subjugates them by his power that's found in John, that's already in Mark and Matthew. And yet, guess what? Luke doesn't mention it. So if you're going to subscribe to the views of modern scholarship that says that Luke used Mark, that means Luke would have been aware of that I am saying, but didn't include it, which confirms my point. They were aware of the I am sayings, but for their purposes, they didn't feel the need to include many of them or any of them in the case of Luke, not because they didn't know the I am sayings, but because for their purpose, they didn't include them. That's the answer. So now you need to explain to me, how is it in Mark 6, the first of the Gospels, according to modern scholarship, you have an I am saying of Jesus found in John 6 in the context of Jesus walking over upon the waters to demonstrate his sovereign authority over the winds and the waves, something that the Hebrew scriptures ascribe to Yahweh alone. I wouldn't, you see, I, I, can't, I can't object to that. Uh, what you did, what, it, what you said, is is the truth. I mean, um, they they all you see even in, I don't want to divert or anything, but I know even in in Mark one, yeah. it's already quoting Isaiah forty verse three, you know? and which is found in John, right? Where the oh, Baptist yes. says, "I am the voice of Isaiah." As the prophet Isaiah said of one crying out in the wilderness. So in John one twenty three, John the Baptist says, "I am the voice that cries out in the wilderness," as the prophet Isaiah announced. So. Mark 1 and John 1 both agree Jesus is the Lord of Isaiah 40, and both agree that John the Baptist is the voice, the forerunner, preparing the people for the appearance of Yahweh, who turns out to be Jesus. 
So the so-called earliest gospel and the last of the gospels both begin by affirming that Jesus is the God of Israel, the human appearance of Yahweh. I, I, I agree with that. I don't object to that. I so where, where is the I, development? I if the earliest gospel portrays Jesus as Yahweh in the flesh, because scholars say Mark is the earliest gospel. I'm not saying they're right. I'm, let's assume. Let's, uh, let's buy into their assumptions. Mark is the first of the gospels. And then the latest gospel, supposedly John, because John is the last of the gospels. So if you have Mark affirming Jesus as Yahweh in the flesh, and you have John affirming that Jesus is Yahweh in the flesh, where's the development in Christology? Yeah, now I don't see the development at all because they all portray him as, as Yahweh in the flesh. Now that I look at it. Yeah, so that's why I'm aware of the arguments of scholars and I, I don't buy it. I'm not convinced because it's not true. Matthew, Mark, Luke, are unaware of the I am sayings. Why? I just gave you an example. Mark 650. The Greek is right there. Egg yeah, by me. I am. Do not be afraid. Exact same context as found in John 6. Because Mark, Matthew, and John re record the same miracle story. So I want to repeat it for everyone else because I was speaking a little fast. Again, everyone write down Mark 6, 45 to 52. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Matthew 14, 22 to 33. And write down John 6, 16 to 21. It's the same story. It's Jesus walking on water. And it actually appears in the same context. Because in Mark 6, Matthew 14, and John 6, it follows up Jesus' miraculous feeding of the 5,000 men. With women and children, be more. So here, Ma Mark, Matthew, and John all record the miraculous feeding of the 5,000 in the wilderness with a few loaves and a few fish. And then all record that right after that, the disciples got in the boat to head to the other side. And in the middle of the night, Jesus walked on water and said, Egoi me, I am, do not be afraid. So I'm going to ask you the question so you can get the point, which you already got. But just for emphasis, sure. if you believe that's what scholars say, that Luke used Mark as one of his sources, right? Because Matthew and, Mark, Matthew and Luke supposedly used Mark. And then they edited Mark and changed Mark according to the view of scholars. Let's go with yeah. that. Let's assume they're right. That means Luke would have been aware of this story because it appears in Matthew. So if Matthew and Luke are using Mark, Mark has the story of Jesus walking on water after feeding the 5,000 men in the wilderness <clears throat> with a few loaves and few fish. And then as he walks on the water, he says, I am, <clears throat> do not be afraid. Matthew includes both the miraculous feeding and Jesus walking on water and claiming to be the I am, ego me, I am. Luke had Mark, would have seen that story, but didn't include it. Isn't this proof that the writers, at least let's stick with Luke. Luke was aware of the I am sayings, even though he didn't include them. He definitely was aware of them, yeah. If he's using Mark as a source and he's using the gospel Q and like an L source, he's obviously, he obviously he's aware of the, the, all the I am statements. You find so, so that's, I, I won't object to that, yeah. That's I my agree. point. Just because John records more I am sayings than found in Matthew and Mark, and in Luke, you don't even find one example of Jesus using ego me that's similar to that of John. That doesn't mean they're not aware of it. It means they had their own reasons for including the material that they wanted to be included because there's only so much information you can <clears throat> include in a scroll that is so long. And so they have to be selective. And this is where John comes and says, I'm going to now compliment these gospels by not repeating what's already there because it's already there. If you take their assumption, would you subscribe to that assumption and say then that by that same principle, when the Quran quotes Jesus saying something that's not found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that definitely is not historical. Ah, uh, that's a hard one. Um, because that's the assumption, right? What's the assumption? Yeah, I can I can see the double standard screen. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay, you understand the assumption? The assumption is since yeah. John quotes Jesus saying things and doing things not found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that means the things of John must be either mm, fabrications, stuff he made up and attributed to Jesus, or John is giving you an inspired interpretation of what Jesus meant, but not actual history. So we go with that assumption. I look to the Quran, and there are things that Jesus says in the Quran not found and even directly contradicts what's found in Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and even John. So by their principle, that means the Quran cannot be trusted and should be rejected, right? Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. So why do Muslims use scholars selectively and not consistently and just go all the way and become agnostic and atheist like the apostate prophet?